Okay, welcome everybody. A short, or at least I hope a short uh, video to follow up our discussion board on academic integrity. Uh, so, yeah, as you may have discovered, it's very difficult for me to make short videos. I like to, but I just can't do it. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, this came out of this, or what I would like to talk about today came out of these observations I like to share. I, I stopped sharing them uh, because uh, they were generally uh, proscriptive, that is punishing or limiting. And to me, what's really important is the, you know, things that you can do in college and the opportunities that you do have in college. And, uh, you know, that includes the rights and privileges and uh, just as an aside, at, when you graduate from York, the president, when they're uh, actually giving you your diploma, will talk about that you uh, are a graduate of York College with all the rights and privileges thereof. That's a very interesting phrase. That phrase is probably a thousand years old. Colleges have been around for a thousand years, and that phrase goes back at least several hundred if not a thousand. What are these rights or privileges? Uh, you know, I've looked them up and they generally differ from university to university, but back a thousand years ago some of these rights and privileges are that you could get a free beer every day in in the town tavern and well that may, may sound very fun. Back a thousand years ago water was usually poison, <laughs> poisonous and contaminated and the only way to drink uh, get your fluids in a safe way would be drinking something uh, that had alcohol in it which uh, would uh, kill bacteria in the brewing process uh, but other privileges uh, you know sound pretty cool like you're not you're not able to be forced into the army of the local lord and that sounds like a really cool privilege for today uh, but one of the rights that uh, is pretty universal across all universities is that any alumni, any graduate, degree-bearing graduate of a university is considered a part of the academy. That is this group of uh, people who are committed to learning. And the way that's enacted is that your rights as an alumni uh, are that you actually get to sit on the, uh, you know, the uh, college senate and vote along with your professors on issues uh, relating to the college. That was a thousand years ago. Uh, that doesn't really work today, uh, but that's the rights and privileges and it gets back to this idea of college and the academy. And the academy is a society or an institution that is colleges of distinguished scholars and artists or scientists that aim to promote and maintain standards in its field. And that's what you're really a part of here, a group of people who want to promote and maintain standards in the field. And part of that you know, directly feeds into the idea of academic integrity. That is, you're a part of academic integrity as much as I am. And indeed it says here in the York Statement, both faculty and students are held accountable to these standards at York. And in fact, I've known faculty here at York who have been caught cheating, uh, that is plagiarizing, and they have been fired. Uh, so it does apply to both faculty and students. And I really take this seriously, and so that's why I asked you how we can uphold academic integrity in this class. Uh, you've talked about uh, the uh, quizzes, the exams, uh, the discussion boards, and examples that you gave, you know, getting someone to help you, uh, you know, someone to go online for you, uh, using someone else's notes, but then, you know, for an exam, but then what if you study together? Can you have the same notes? And APA citation procedures. And, uh, you know, so what are the rules of conduct that we want to decide for ourselves? Uh, do we want to submit our own work? Is that important? 
Uh, can we study together and share notes or not share notes? Uh, I don't think I should by myself make these decisions. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post until Wednesday a survey. This is a survey so it's anonymous. I can't tell who you are. And it has about eight questions on it I think. And I uh, describe eight different situations that may be academic uh, dishonesty. And I ask you to evaluate them. And uh, I ask you what should we do if we find someone violating one of these situations. Uh, and what I'd like to do is get some feedback from you, some anonymous feedback. However, I think that it will be binding. That is what we agree upon in class. Uh, and what you agree upon uh, in this uh, you know, survey is the rules for what is considered academic integrity and what isn't, uh, you know, is the appropriate uh, you know, uh, response to a violation of that. That is what the appropriate penalty is. So that's why I asked you to go over the academic integrity statement so that uh, we could have this discussion and I could prep you for uh, making some decisions about how we want to go about uh, structuring uh, our class because you are a part of this academy. And finally, I really mean this, so I should put my mouth, my, you know, money where my mouth is. Uh, if I make a factual uh, error in class, if I say something wrong, and professors do say things wrong, partially by accident, but partially by thinking the wrong things, uh, and you can correct me and give me proof you're getting uh, extra credit. Uh, the extra credit will be based on how bad it was. Uh, if I really screwed up and I'm incredibly embarrassed by what I did, you, you may get like a whole letter grade uh, extra credit. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, but that's the highest. But I am serious about this. Uh, I do make mistakes. I do. Uh, I don't know everything. And so I am willing to be corrected, and I'm looking forward to being corrected, and will reward people for being corrected. So uh, Wednesday night, the, the you know is the end of the survey, so do it before then, and uh, we'll get back and we'll discuss uh, you know what we find.